Hello, hello, and welcome. Today I'm going to be opening this here box of Commander Legends. Uh, collector boosters, that is. Now, here's the thing. I didn't actually plan to buy one of these quite yet. I was going to wait until Black Friday and maybe I could pick up a deal, or at the very least, pick up some other deals and share some shipping costs here or there. But then, they went and spoiled Jeweled Lotus. And I thought that, well, from that point on, obviously these were going to sell like crazy and prices were going to go up. So I went ahead and pre-ordered this particular box. And lo and behold, um, yeah, I was kind of right because within weeks, these were suddenly very difficult to come by, and if you did find them, they were 40 50 90 dollars more than I paid for this one. Yeah, I kind of hate it when my intuition is right sometimes, but... Well, one way or another, I now have this box in my hands, and I'm gonna open it. So, let's see what we get. Uh, maybe I'll get a jeweled lotus, although... By this point, it's probably not even worth the collection of storm crows that you see behind you. But hey, there's a lot of cool stuff in this set. I have honestly really been looking forward to opening this. And there's a lot of cards that I actually want. So hey, let's see what we've got. Very shiny and purple. Uh, no surprise uh, Expedition Lands this time, though. That's kind of a shame. Uh, you know what? This is just going to get in the way. There we go. Easier for everyone this way. Now, just, uh... Well, let's go ahead. Let's see what we get. Uh, I haven't really looked into the packs themselves a whole lot. Uh, I hear that there's quality issues, and in fact, as you can see in the top corner of this angel token, it is already bent. Cool. I hope that doesn't carry through to the uh, full art jeweled lotus that's no doubt behind it. Uh, so we've got a foundry, foundry inspector here, which is now a common. I believe it was an uncommon. Still, very good card. Impulsive Pilfer. When it dies, create a treasure token. Neat little one-drop goblin. Uh, Gale Strike from Amonkhet. Uh, Staunch Throne Guard. Okay, well that's interesting. Uh, Scab Goliath, of course. Uh, Hunter's Insight. Skilled Animator. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, target artifact you control becomes an artifact creature. Oh yeah, this is actually a really cool card, and I've actually skipped into my uncommons already. The phone is also ringing. I wonder if that'll bleed into this, uh, into the recording. So here we have our first partner, Arden, intrepid archaeologist. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you can attach any number of auras and equipment to target permanent or player. Oh, this is actually a neat card. Um... I think people like pairing this guy with the, uh, uh, what's it, the Cobalt, the Zero Drop Cobalt for an equipment deck? It's actually a really cool idea. Anyway, what do we have next? I'll put the partners over here, I think. Oh, well, speak of the Cobalt, here he is. Rogok, son of Roga. First strike, menace, trample, zero drop, partner, zero one. Strength is relative. Very good in an equipment deck. And here we have a Laboratory Drudge. At the beginning of each end step, draw a card if you've cast a spell from a graveyard, or activated an ability of a card in a graveyard. Okay, just another card draw value engine in a graveyard deck. Uh, which I don't have, but... Oh, this one's a rare, by the way. Let's put that in a different pile. So here we've got Coiling Oracle, full art. We've got an or Aurora Phoenix, full art. What is this? Flying Cascade. Whenever you cast a spell with Cascade, return it from your graveyard to your hand. Hmm. Okay, I guess. 
Ooh, here we go. This is our first uh, first etched card. Breaches the Brazen Plunderer. Let's see if we can shine the light properly to uh, get the the etched foiling. Yeah, it doesn't really show up that well, actually. It's I mean it's it looks kind of cool in person anyway, but it doesn't show up as nicely as the other foils do in the light. It's a lot flatter, I think. It's more more uniform shininess to these things. Uh, anyway, what do we do here? We have Menace. Whenever one more pirate deals damage to your opponents, exile the top card of those opponents' libraries. You may play those cards this turn. Spend mana or mana of any color to cast them. And it has Partner. See, I really like Partner as a mechanic, but I don't like these tribal Partner cards that you need pirates. I mean, I guess Breaches is a pirate, so it works with itself, but yeah, I prefer the partner cards to be more general. Oh, well, hello there. This is, I think, a pretty good pull. Uh, Najila, the Blade Blossom, etched foil, mythic rare. Yeah, here we go. You can sort of, sort of see what I'm talking about, how it's just uniform foil across the whole card. I mean, it does look really cool. Maybe I can move this lamp light a bit and... Yeah, no. Ah, oh, there we go. That that looks pretty neat, I guess. Anyway, yeah, Najila was an extremely valuable card. And uh, this is a cool alternative way to get get hold of one. Uh, warrior Tribal, of course. Whenever a warrior attacks, have its controller create a warrior token tapped in attacking. And you can give yourself uh, extra combat phases. Five color warrior deck though, pretty cool. Now, what is the next card gonna be? Hua. Oh, hey, this is another really cool one actually. Oh, Becca, the brute chronologist. Again, another um, etched foil. So, how many etched foils is this? This is the third one. Uh, the player whose turn it is may end the turn. So, uh, you know, throw all those. Um, what are they? Final fortune effects in this deck. Just get free turns. Hey. I'm bored with now. It's a very interesting card. Uh, oh, there we go. That's the uh, that's the last one of this pack. We've also got a spirit token with the angel on the back. Oh, right. I was going to check. Is Obeka damaged at all on the back? No, doesn't look like it. Okay, well, that's that's good because, oh, yeah, this this angel has been crunched. Rather unfortunate. Anyway... Uh, that Najila was a pretty good pull, I've got to say. And, um, anyway, let's move right on ahead, this copy token, the back here. So, Core Cartographer, enters the battlefield, put a planes into play. Actually a pretty good card for mono white, or maybe Boros colors, where you don't get a lot of alternative land ramp. Uh, where'd my commons go? Here they are. Malfed Twins, yeah, make the zombies. Armory of Eroas, yeah, yeah. Got Eye Blight colors. When it dies, create three 1-1 one, one elf warrior creature tokens. Hmm, mill three. Uh, Thorn of the Black Rose, you become the monarch. Not bad, a lot of monarch cards in this set. Uh, Ordeal of Nylia. Interesting, uh... We've got a full art foil factor fiction. How's that for an alliteration? Nice though, pretty good one. Uh, I don't know, I guess I'll put it with the full arts. Brynlin, the moon kraken. Partner, uh, enters the battlefield, whenever you cast a spell from your mana class six or greater, return a non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Fascinating. Well, there's your, for the big sea creatures deck right there. Uh, Emoti, Celebrant of Bounty, Cascade. Oh, this one's not a partner. Spells you cast with converted mana cost six or greater have Cascade. Oh. Wow, here's your big stuff commander. <laughs> Very cool, actually. It's an interesting one. Um, I don't know, whatever, I'll put it in that pile. Armored Sky Hunter is a foil rare. Whenever it attacks on the top six cards, put an aura or equipment from among them onto the battlefield. Uh, you can attach it to a creature. Huh. Rest on the bottom in a random order. Well, I mean, really, for 
four mana. That's actually pretty good in an equipment deck. Now we've got this full art Myriad Landscape. A full art Nevinerals disc. I almost thought that was a Jeweled Lotus. Almost. Ooh, this is a fancy uh, etched card. The black artifact effects look really cool like this. Uh, whenever it attacks, discard a card. If you do target creature, minus X, minus X. Where X is the number of artifacts you control, plus in your graveyard. And it has partner. Huh, an artifact graveyard commander in black. I mean, I guess it has partner. It can be any color. Ooh. Here we have a etched Ludovic, which was one of the original partner commanders. At the beginning of each player's end step, that player may draw a card if a player other than you lost life this turn. Hmm. Oh, and here we have Arkelos, the Lagoon Mystic. As long as it's tapped, other permanents enter tapped. As long as it's untapped, other permanents enter untapped. I feel like this could be an incredibly annoying commander to play against. It's cool in theory. On paper, I actually really like this legendary turtle shaman. Uh, but to actually play it, though, I don't know. Kind of feel like it would be a feels bad card for everyone else. And uh, oh, that is the last card in the pack. Another spirit token to go with this copy. So, what do we have in pack number three? Well, we've got another copy token. That's something. Uh, Anointer of Valor. Uh, whenever a creature attacks, pay three. Put a 1-1 counter on that creature. For, oh, six mana. I mean, it's a common, all right. Uh, aqueous Form. This is an old classic. This is not that old, but... Rip Scale Predator. Just a 6-5 with Menace. Okay. Kinsbale Courier. Enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 counter on target creature. Ah, kind of does that angel's job. A lot earlier and more easily. It even has Encore. Well, this is actually kind of a solid card, really. A good common. Sky Whaler's Shot. Uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Meteor Golem. I actually really like this card. Comes into play, destroy a non-land permanent and opponent controls. Ba-boom. 3-3 three, three for 7. Oh, it's your colorless removal, you know. Strength of the pack. Put two 1-1 one, one counters on each creature you control for 6 mana. Okay. Ooh, Alharu, the Solemn Ritualist. Enters battlefield, put a 1-1 one, one counter on each of up to two target creatures. Whenever a non-token creature you control with a 1-1 one, one counter on it dies, create a spirit token. And it has partner. Huh. Well, five mana, I mean, that's a little bit steep. But, well, still, you know, 1-1 one, one counter decks could probably find some use in this. Some sort of Abzan token deck, perhaps. Halana, the Kessig Ranger. As reach, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, pay two. Oh, that creature does something. Oh, no, don't look at that one, don't look at that one. Uh, if you do, that creature deals damage equal to its power to target creature. Oh, okay, so just sort of, uh, uh not fights. Oh, what's the card that does that? I don't know. There's a couple of them, I think. Still, actually pretty solid, really. Good in a green deck, that's for sure. So, this is a uh, foil Sphinx of the Second Sun. At the beginning of your post-combat main phase, you get an additional beginning phase, uh, which is an untap, upkeep, and draw. I mean, eight mana is huge. But, uh, I feel like this is a pretty powerful Sphinx. <laughs> Uh, probably a pretty good pull, too. Uh, so what do we have here? We've got an Arcane Denial. Full art. Getting into the crazy stuff here. Ooh, Full Art Undergrowth Stadium. The uh, From the second half of the Battle Bond Land cycle. Enters untapped if you have two or more opponents. Quite good. I actually want these. Whoa, would you look at that one. So this is uh, Tuya Bear Claw Etched Foil. Uh, whenever it attacks, gets plus X plus X. X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Huh, yeah, just uh, another big stuff commander. There's a lot of big stuff commanders, I've noticed. 
Maybe I'm just getting all the green ones. Ooh. Well, now this is a very interesting one. Kara Metra, God of Harvest. I didn't even know that she got an etched foil in this. I know Xenagos did. Still, this is a... Oh, this is a pretty good one. Kara Metra is interesting. I actually kind of want to build a landfall deck around her. So you just play creatures and you get lands for it. Hmm. Cool card, really. Happy with that one. Ooh, and this one too, to be quite honest. Lafiel, the Bounteous Dawn. That's, uh, oh, there we go. Let's actually get the light hitting it properly. Yeah, the light does weird things with these etched foils. Huh. Anyway, lifelink at the beginning of each end step. If you gained life, distribute up to that many 1-1 counters among any number of other target creatures. So just throw 1-1 counters all over the place. Pretty solid card. And the Salamander Warrior token. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. Haven't seen the card that makes these yet, but that's a pretty good one. Okay, what's next? Well, there is a Natural Reclamation. Am I in focus? Am I in focus? Yeah. Cascade, destroy an artifact or enchantment. Hmm. Cool. Run away together. Haunted Cloak, Ooh, Vigilance, Trample, and Haste. That's a lot of stuff. Scrounging Bandar. Anders Battlefield with one... Oh yeah, you can move 1-1 one, one counters. It's like a mini Forgotten Ancient. Kind of a neat card. Sentinel Spider, Vigilance Reach. Got Coastline Marauders. Uh, and every attacks gets bigger for each land defending player controls. Hmm. All right, all right. Since only three mana. Uh, ooh, this is a foil full art victimize, which is actually probably a pretty good uncommon to pull like this, to be to be quite honest. Oop. Here we've got Radiant, Sarah Archangel. Uh, tap another untapped creature you control with flying, gets protection from the color of your choice till end of turn. Hmm. Alright. Ooh, seven mana is pretty big though. Well, whatever. It's a partner. Ghost of Ramirez de Pietro. Ah, yes, that's what be became of old Ramirez after the Legends block. Uh, can't be blocked by creatures with toughness 3 or greater. Kind of has Skulk, but with toughness. And whenever it deals combat damage to a player, choose up to one tar card in a graveyard that is discarded or put there from a library this turn. Put that card into its owner's hand. Huh, that's actually an interesting effect. Hmm. Ooh, and here we've got a Foil Vault of Champions. Nice, nice, nice. Another one of the uh, Battle Bond lands. Got a Full Art Burnished Heart. That's pretty solid. We've got a Full Art Sphinx of the Second Sun to go with our Foil one. Cool. We've got this uh, Essior Ward Wing Familiar. Flying spells your opponent's cast to the target one or more commanders you control. Costs three more to cast. Oh, kind of... That's a partner, so it kind of protects your other commander. Or if you're gaining control of your opponent's commanders, I guess, it helps you keep them. Interesting. Only two mana. It's practically a Stormcrow. Uh, Ishai, Ujatai, Dragon Speaker. This is another one of the original partners. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, put a 1-1 one -one counter on it. Hmm. Cool. Cool to see these things again in the etched foil. And Blim, the comedic genius. Uh, whenever it deals contact to a player, that player gains control of target permanent you control. Then each player loses life and discards cards equal to the number of permanents they control but don't own. So it's kind of an anti-Zedru. <laughs> the opposite. Although this one's actually in black, so you can give people... Some pretty nasty stuff that'll just make them lose the game right away. <laughs> okay, this is a cool card. I could see you... I could see somebody building a neat deck around this guy. And, of course, we have the Elf Warrior token to go with our copy. Oh, we're almost halfway through. Taking a bit longer than I normally do to go through these. That's mostly because there's a bit more to talk about.
So I blight. Oh, what the heck is up with the top of this card? It's like. I don't know, does that show up on camera? Yeah, you can see it. It's very... It's like this weird smudge in the ink right at the top. It, is it bent? Oh, maybe it's bent a little, actually. That's what it is. Anyway, non-elves get smaller. Okay. Uh, Court Street Denizen. An ambush Viper. Flash Death Touch. Ancestral Blade. There's the battlefield, create a soldier token and attach Ancestral Blade to it. Equip creature has plus one, plus one. Oh, that's actually kind of cool. What set was this from? Is this new from this one? Hmm. Interesting effect, actually. Sanitarium Skeleton. Kind of like a like the old living weapon cards from New Phyrexia. Demonic Lore. When it enters battlefield, draw three cards. At the beginning of your end step, lose two life for each card in your hand. I actually really like this card. Three mana, draw three cards, but with a big drawback. It's actually a really nice foil, too. You can see that. There's another card that was sort of like this from, uh... Hmm, what was it? It was from the last Theros set. Really cool. I like to use them in something, but I don't know where. Ah, oh, Mask of Memory. Tuya Bearclaw, the normal foil version. Your Lock of Scorch Thrash. Okay, this one's, uh, this is another interesting commander. A player losing unspent mana causes that player to lose that much life, so it reintroduces mana burn to the game. One mana tap, everybody gets black, red, green. The Gifts of Jund never come without a price. Very interesting card, but again, I feel like it would be a Kind of feel-bad card to play against, because I'm sure you're going to be loading your deck with ways to actually use this effect properly. <laughs> uh, into the pile of rares. Undergrowth Stadium, full art foil. Oh, that's pretty cool, that's pretty cool. Although it's a shame to get a double of one of these lands. We've got this full art command tower. Non-foil. Got a full art austere command. Okay, that's a pretty good one. We've got oh, we've got the etched version of this card, which we got in our first pack. Nice. Got the etched version of Bruce Tarl, the Boorish Herder. Which is another one of the original ones. Kinda cool. Uh end of the battlefield, tar creature you control gains double strike and lifelink until end of turn. Hmm. Cool. Cause it yeah, he can give it to himself. This is sort of like a Boros version of, uh, oh, what was, oh, his, his name escapes me, the Exalted guy from, uh, from Bant. And it'll probably come back to me in a little bit. Anyway, still, cool card. And Colfiner, the last you. Menace, reach. Oh, when it or another creature dies, return up to one target creature with lesser toughness from your graveyard to your hand. Oh, pretty cool. Abzan colors, nice. And another elf warrior. Oh, what the heck is this? Rock. Equipped creature has one tap, sacrifice, rock. <laughs> this creature deals two damage to any target. Equip one. Rocks do as much damage as shocks do, it would seem. Rocks and shocks. Oh, come on, pack, you can open. I believe in you. Oh, we've got the uh, the new monarch token. Look at that. That's uh, let's get this in focus, please, camera. Come on, you can do it. There it is. Without the uh, without the typo in it, at the beginning of your end step, draw a card. Oh, that's which end step it happens in. Hmm, got it. Oh wait, no, the typo didn't have of. Never mind. I've made a fool of myself. Anyway. Sky Raker Giant. And again, we've got this bend in the top. Am I doing that when I try to open these? Are they so loose in there that I'm bending the top cards? Uh, Filigree Familiar. Frexian Rager. Fall from Favor. No, all of these cards are like that. I think it's just printed that way. Uh, Enders Battlefield, tap Enchanted Creature, you become the Monarch. Enchanted Creature doesn't untap. Unless its player is the Monarch. A lot of Monarch support in this deck. Deck. Set. 
Strategic planning. Oh, Shimmermer, demoted from its rare status. Flash, and you may cast artifact spells as though they had. Good card, though. Ooh, Supreme Will. That's another good uncommon. Some stacked uncommons in this set. Uh, counter target spell, unless it's controller, pays three. Or look at the top four cards of your library, put one into your hand, the rest on the bottom. Very versatile card. Now, Dargo, the Shipwrecker. As an additional cost to cast this spell, you can sacrifice any number of artifacts and or creatures. It costs two less for each permanent to sacrifice this way, two less to cast for each other artifact or creature you've sacrificed this turn. So this is a 7-5 with Trample, so you might not think it, but this is a combo commander for sure. You can... I mean, it always it always stacks, right? It never forgets what you've already sacrificed this turn, so... You can just keep on making it cheaper and sacrifice itself and cast it again and again and again. I'm sure you can do some crazy stuff with this guy. Uh, Keskit, the Flesh Sculptor. Sacrifice three other artifacts and or creatures. Look at the top three cards in your library, put two into your hand, the other into your graveyard. And with partner. Which is, I mean, it's costly. You've got to sacrifice a lot of stuff to use this guy, but I mean, it draws a lot of cards too. Horizon Stone. If you would lose unspent mana, that mana becomes colorless instead. Oh, I guess you could use this with that uh, Thrash Commander. Where is he? Yurlock. Yeah. Interesting. Kind of like Crew Fix, actually, just on an artifact. A Braid? Okay. Classic little spell here. I've got this uh, Court of Ambition. Enters battlefield. You become the monarch. Begin of your unke uh, unkeep, upkeep. Each opponent loses three life unless they discard a card. If you're the monarch, instead, each opponent loses six life unless they discard two cards. Huh. Interesting. Cool. Kanji, the Sky Warden. So this is what became of Kanji. There's a very, very old Kanji card as well. Huh. Flying, Vigilance. And uh, whenever it attacks, attacking creatures with flying get plus two plus O. Oh. Whenever it blocks, blocking creatures with flying get plus O plus two. Cool. Oh, there's your bird commander wizard for all these storm crows. Tana, the blood sh shower. Oof, I've been talking nonstop and I'm tripping over my words. Tana, the blood sower. Another one of the original partner commanders. And, uh, what is this one? Livio, the or oath sworn sentinel. Uh, choose another target creature. Controller may exile it. Uh, return all exile cards with Aegis counters to the battlefield under their owner's control. Okay, an interesting take on the blinking mechanic. It's interesting, actually, about this one is that it exiles them with these counters, so it remembers even if Livio leaves the battlefield and com comes back. Okay, that's kind of neat, actually. And a golem token to go with that monarch token. Okay, so, what am I doing here? Am I... Oh, yeah, you know, ooh, that is what's happening. I am actually bending the top card because there's so much space in here, they move around. Oops. Oh, well, they're only commons. So, here we have a Fertilid. If the camera would... There it goes. More 1-1 one, one counter mechanics, search for lands, it's a good card. Spectral searchlights, give anybody mana, cool card. Sailor of Means, yeah, it makes a treasure token. Spontaneous Mutation, which is oh, an interesting looking foil actually, those, uh, those tentacles really pop out at you. Undying Rage. And <laughs> confiscate. You control enchanted permanent. Yeah. Take anything. Guilt leaf winnower. Nadier. Nadier? Agent of the Duskenel. An elf warrior. Hmm. Uh, whenever a token you control leaves the battlefield, 1 1 counter. Oh, token specifically. And when it leaves the battlefield, create a number of green elf warrior tokens equal to its power. Oh, that's kind of neat. Oh, six mana's steep, but a cool card. Oh, the Goblin Weaponsmith. Togo, this is where the rocks come from. 
Yeah, whenever a land enters the battlefield, create a rock. Nice. And partner. Court of Cunning. Yeah, you become the monarch. Um, entire players mill two cards. If you're the monarch, instead they mill ten. Nice. That's, ten is a big number. Now, Acidic Slime. And Keeper of the Accord, which I believe is actually a good card. Beginning of each opponent's end step, if that player controls more creatures, make a soldier. Beginning of each opponent's end step, if that player controls more land, search your library for basic planes, put it on the battlefield tapped. Yeah, very classic sort of comeback from behind mechanics for white, but a good card still. And we, aw, oh, a double of Rograk, son of Roga. Oh, actually, my first one might not have been etched. This one is. So maybe it's not truly a double. Oh, hey, look at this. This one's a pull. We've got the etched foil Queen Marchesa. Yeah, that's, I mean, if you're building monarch stuff, this is definitely a commander you would consider running, or at least put it in the deck. Nice, that's a very nice looking etched card, I must say. And Kodama of the East Tree, which I believe is also a very good card. Uh, whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control, if it wasn't put onto the battlefield with this ability, put a permanent card with equal or lesser converted mana cost from your hand onto the battlefield. Nice, just get free stuff. Sure, why not? And here we have a Star Star Horror token to go with this zombie. So... What is in the next pack, I wonder? Ugh, still can't open the darn things. So, here we have... Yeah, but nah, it's still like that, though. Maybe it's not me doing it, because I definitely didn't bend anything on the inside of the pack this time. Maybe they're just printed like that. Anyway. Soul's Fire. Palace Sentinels, you become the monarch. Spark Tongue Dragon. Uh, lightning Bolt something for three mana when it enters the battlefield. Life Crafter's Gift. <laughs> Wild Size. Ah, yes, this older magic art. That's good, I like it. Angelic Armors. Oh, yeah, look at. Can you let's see if this shows up on the camera? Like this, the top is, no, it doesn't really show up. But it's all, yeah, here you can sort of see these, these scratches along the top. It's all scratched inward. Very strange, very strange. Uh, second victimize? Sure, I guess. Oh, Iktekik, Salvage Splicer. Enters battlefield, create a golem. Never an artifact, put into a graveyard, put a 1-1 counter on it and each golem. Hmm. Here, Splicer Commander decks. Rebecca, Architect of Ascension. Oh, that's uh, rough to say. Rebecca the Architect. Uh, artifacts have protection from each converted mana cost among artifacts you control. Hmm. I mean, it's a simple effect, but powerful one, I guess. Sakashima's Protégé. Flash Cascade, and have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any permanent that entered the battlefield. Oh! See, what's interesting about this having Cascade is that it could technically enter as a copy of something you Cascade into, I believe. Because it doesn't target, and Cascade is on cast, so whatever it Cascades into will hit the battlefield first. It's actually a really cool card. Uh, this Full Art Viscera Seer. And we've got a mythic full art Hellkite Courser. In this battlefield, you may put a commander you own from the command zone onto the battlefield, gains haste, turn it to the command zone, beginning of the next end step. Oh, that's very interesting. And if you use Hellkite Courser, of course, with, um, what's her name? The Chronologist. Uh, where is she? Ah, whatever. You could end your turn and uh, just keep her. Cool. And here we have an etched Rayav Master Smith. Whenever a creature you control that's enchanted or equipped attacks, it gains double strike. Cool. 
Don't need to include double strike equipment with this guy. Uh, ooh. Yoriko, the Tiger's Shadow. Commander Ninjutsu. Turn an unblocked attacker to the hand with this card. Oh yeah, from the command zone. Comment down to your player, reveal the top card of your library, put it into your hand. Your opponent loses life equal to that card's converted mana cost. This was a very difficult card to find, I recall. It was, um, like, only from a commander deck. And that commander deck got quite valuable because a lot of people like building around this one. And here we have Jared Carthalion, the true heir. And there's Battlefield, an opponent becomes the monarch. If damage would be dealt to... Jared, while you're the monarch, prevent that damage, put that many 1-1 one -one counters on it. An interesting way to build around monarch by giving it to somebody else, but still, nifty. So what is this? This is the uh, third, fourth last pack. Oh, come on now, there we are. So we've got this. Marble Diamond. A neat little mana rock. Adds white. Uh, prosperous Pirates. Make treasure tokens. Bitter Revelations. Uh, two of them into your hand, the rest into your graveyard. You lose two life. Four mana. It's not bad for that effect, I guess. Brazen Freebooter. Uh, yeah, make more treasure. I mean, a lot of pirates make treasure, it would seem. Who would have thought? Spark Harvest. Nadir's Nightblade. Oh, that is a rough smudge all the way down the middle of this card. It doesn't really show up in the light, but it's there. Inch opponent loses life, you gain a life whenever a token leaves. Huh. Uh, Vow of Duty. Jury, Master of the Review. Whenever you sacrifice a permanent, put a 1-1 one -one counter on Jury. Uh, dies, deals down, shiggle to its power to any target. Hmm. Interesting. Ah, what is the Crossroads Augur? If you would scry, draw that many cards instead, partner. Oh yeah. Well, hey. I mean, that's one way to draw a ton of cards, I guess. And it's a partner commander. You can just staple that into any other partner commander and give yourself a crazy draw engine. A uh, foil full art and a Vinerals disc. Kind of nifty. Got a Thought Vessel right here, full art. We've got, ooh, that's bright. Another Sakashima's Protégé. Now what is this? Prava of the Steel Legion. A Cat Soldier. As long as it's your turn, creature tokens got plus one plus four. And you make soldier tokens. All right. All right. Got a Etched Foil Zur the Enchanter. That's kind of a cool one. A very classic... Commander from Cold Snap, I believe, Zer was originally released in. Is this stuff on the card or in the art? It might be stars in the art. And at the oh, of course, we have Hans Ericsson. Oh, yeah. Whenever it attacks, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature, put it onto the battlefield. Tapped an attacking defending player. Otherwise, put it into your hand. When you put a creature card onto the battlefield, it fights Hans Ericsson. <laughs> Nothing could ruin such a fine day, Safi. <laughs> and then the Lurgoif shows up. This is actually a hilarious card. I like this card. Oh, foil treasure token. Gotta have the foily foil treasure tokens to go with the thrall. So, what have we here? We've got a copy. Ooh, and a moss diamond to go with the uh, the white one. Add green. Gift of Paradise. Got Angelic Gift. Pilgrim's Eye. Slith Ascendant. Volcanic Torrent. Cascade. Uh, deals X damage to each creature in Planeswalker your opponent's control. X is the number of spells you've cast this turn. Hmm, I wonder, I mean, I feel like the way they designed this card, it must even count the card that you cascade into, so it must choose X on resolution. Oh, huh, that's kind of cool. Interesting design there. Merchant Raiders. 
Another pirate enters the battlefield. Tap a uh, creature, it doesn't untap. As long as you control merchant raiders. Ah, oh, yeah, I guess. Ties them up. It's a neat card. Siani, Eye of the Storm. Uh, whenever it attacks, scry X, where X is the number of attacking creatures with flying. Hey, it goes with that Sphinx. Although that would be a mono blue partner deck. I don't know if you'd want to do that. Numa, Draga Chieftain. Beginning of combat on your turn, you can pay double X, distribute X, 1-1 one, one counters among any number of target elves. Only elves. Hmm. I wonder what you'd partner this one with. Oh, there was that black one, wasn't there? Court of Ambition. I believe we've seen this one already. And a uh, full art path of ancestry enters tapped, add a man of any color, your col commander's color identity. Uh, scry one, if it shares a creature type with your commander. Hmm. Uh, oh, wait, I put this in the wrong pile. There we go, everything's better. Magus of the Order. Yeah, it's a, uh, what, natural order on a creature? Sacrifice it and another creature to just tutor another green creature right into the battlefield? All right, you know, that's, uh, I mean, it's a powerful effect for sure. Uh, Iktekik, except in etched foil this time. To go with this, Marath, Will of the Wild. Enters the battlefield with one on is equal to the amount of mana cost to cast it, or spent to cast it. Remove one one counters, choose X, it can't be zero. Uh, put more one one counters on another creature, deals X damage to any target, create an XX elemental creature token. All right, that's a kind of interesting Naya commander, really. Well, I think this one's quite old. This was one of the far earlier commander decks that released this card. And Nimrus, Una's Trickster, Flash Flying. Whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, look at the top two cards of your library, put one into your hand, the other into your graveyard. Hmm, sure. And a soldier. Second last pack, here we go. What do we got? Oh, well, we got an angel token. And we've got an omen speaker. Yeah, that is definitely on the cards. Hmm. Ooh, Foil Commander Sphere. I believe this is the first time this is available. No. No, I think there's a there's a judge promo of Commander Sphere too, isn't there? But this is the first time a foil is widely available anyway. Dragon Mantle. We've got Elvish Visionary. We've got Universal Solvent. Seven mana destroy target permanent. Hey. For those colorless decks. Sandstone Oracle. We've got a foil full art, Path of Ancestry. That's probably a pretty good pull, actually. I don't even think this was available in foil prior to this. <laughs> Abomination of Lanowar. Uh, Vigilance Menace. Power toughness equal to the number of elves that you control and in your graveyard. <laughs> Run, screamed the living mouths. Come, cried the dead ones. Ah, it's a good one. Nevineral, Urborg Tyrant. Hexproof from artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. Enders Belfield create a tapped zombie for each creature that died this turn. When it dies, you can pay one and destroy all artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. Well, I mean, I was talking about feels bad commanders before. This is, uh, your opponent, uh, nobody can have anything, commander. Uh, Dawn Glade Regent. Oh, this is a cool one. You become the Monarch, and as long as you're the Monarch permanents you control, have Hexproof. For 7 mana, so it's a little bit less than the, uh, Archetype? Yeah, Archetype of Endurance. It does something similar. Still, very, actually quite a powerful effect. I like this one. Uh, Quambage Witches. Deals 1 damage to any target, 1 damage to a target of an opponent's choice. Interesting card with incredible artwork. Seb McKinnon, of course. And an Elvish Dreadlord. When it dies, non-elf creatures get minus three. Encore. Oh, Encore on that is a very interesting effect. Hmm. And we've got an etched version of this particular ghost. Was the first one etched? I don't recall. And a Corridor, Ghost Chieftain. 
Uh, one less to cast for each creature in your graveyard. During each of your turns, you may cast a creature from your graveyard. Hmm. And Belby, the Corrupted Observer. Uh, beginning of each player's pre-combat main phase, they add double colorless uh, for each of your opponents who lost life this turn. What? Oh, post-combat, not pre-combat. Yes, of course. Post-combat. That makes a lot more sense. Treasure token, angel. Okay, this is it. Last pack. Uh, come on. Come on. Oh, we got another... another monarch token. Okay. Exquisite Huntmaster. Flood of Recollection. Captain's Call. Ooh, Foil Opal Palace. Uh, again, I don't believe this was available in foil before, and it is also not in focus. There it is, now it is. Squad Captain. A foil full art of these Quambage witch witches. Oh, that's pretty cool, actually. Teamer, bat Teamer Battle Rage is a full art foil? Really? Gains a double strike to lend a turn. Also gains Trample if it's big enough. I mean, yeah, it's not bad, I guess, but... Full art? Foil? Really? Hmm. Uh, Keleth, Sunmane Familiar. Whenever a commander you control attacks, put a 1-1 counter on it, and it has partner. Hmm. Cool. Uh, Falthus, the Shadowcat Familiar. Commanders have Menace and Death Touch. Partner. Just buffs to your commander. Oh my gosh, really? Full Art Foil Triumphant Reckoning? Return all artifacts, enchantments, and planeswalkers from your graveyard to the battlefield? Hmm. Could have been a Lotus. Oh well. Such is the way of things. Swords to Plowshares? Oh, that's a... No, that's actually a really cool Full Art. Uh... Rakshaw Debaser. When it attacks, put target creature from your defending player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. And Encore. Got a etched version of Emoti. And a etched version of Brago King Eternal. That's an interesting one. I don't remember seeing that this one was in the set. It's pretty cool. Good for a blink deck, that's for sure. And an etched Elegeth Crossroads Augur. Hmm. Solid. I don't think I got any duplicates of etched cards, except maybe the, uh, the Ghost Pirate. I have to double-check that. Still, this is a pretty good one. And an Elf Warrior. Alright, well, that's that. That is the end of the box. So, um... Well, I... Let's see, these are... These are all the partners, including the etched ones that came through this. There's a solid pile of partner commanders. You know, I was kind of worried about how people would draft this set, because it's technically supposed to be drafted, but I don't think anybody would have too much difficulty just by the huge amount of legendary creatures that are available. And these are all the mythics and rares and foils and cool stuff. Zur the Enchanter was a pretty good one. Queen Marchesa is probably the best pull from this box. Just going by memory that I briefly saw of the cards and what they're worth. Oh, maybe Najila too, actually. Najila's a good one. But anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, if you did, then please leave a, a like, a comment, subscribe. I'm, well, I'm planning quite a few more unboxing videos for the near future. We'll see when they arrive in the mail, so stay tuned for that, and I do hope that I'll see you next time. Ta-ta!